If you have been using smart home products for a while, chances are you've probably heard of Acara before, who have tons of smart home devices and sensors in pretty much every category. But since Acara recently launched their products here in the EU and also in the US, I thought it would be a good time to take a look at their smart home products, not only how it works as a standalone smart home platform, but also to give you my thoughts from a home assistant user's perspective and how you can actually easily integrate the Acara smart home products into your home assistant too. Full transparency as always, these products were sent over by Acara in order for me to review them. Now, there are quite a few devices and sensors here to look at, but let's first start off with the new Acara M2 Hub, which is the successor to the M1. The M2 is a Zigbee 3.0 hub that brings all of your Zigbee devices together and provides the smart home functionality. It can support up to 128 devices, connects via Ethernet or Wi-Fi, has a built-in speaker for alarm functionality, and one really nice feature is a built-in 360 degree infrared controller for controlling things that use infrared like TVs or AC units. The hub also supports Google Home, ALEXA and HomeKit and that last one is a really important feature that we will talk about later. Most of the devices are pretty self-explanatory. Akara sent me a motion sensor, door contact sensor, temperature and humidity sensor, a vibration sensor, a water leak sensor, an air quality sensor, a wireless mini switch, a wireless wall switch, a wired wall switch, a magic cube, and the G2H indoor camera. All of these devices are completely wireless, except for, of course, the wired wall switch, the camera, and the hub. And of course, I will have links to everything we have here down in the description if you are interested in checking any of them out. Once you plug the hub in and download the Acara Smart Home app, it is a very, very simple process of adding the hub. Once the hub has been added, you can then add the sensors and devices, which are equally as simple. Just select the device you want to add and pull the battery tab or press the reset button and away you go. I was very surprised and also pleased at just how easy it is to add devices. And as you will see, that will become a theme throughout this video. Also, I have to say I was seriously impressed at the speed and just overall reliability of this app. Often with a lot of these companies, the software experience sucks. But the Akara app is very snappy, it never crashes or just fails to do anything and is extremely well laid out. Good job, Akara. You can also assign devices to the favorites tab for devices that you want to be able to see quickly and easily and glance at the information. Also on the main dashboard is this button that allows you to see the current alarm status and tapping into the alarm page allows you to configure four different alarm modes. One for a 24 seven alarm, which is obviously always on and is for things like water leaks or smoke alarms. And then you can also configure alarms for home, away and night modes, where you would use devices such as your door contact sensors or motion sensors as the trigger. Each one can be enabled and disabled with a tap and when triggered, it causes the hub to start playing a police siren noise, which is pretty funny. And it will also send a notification to your phone. It would be nice to see some sort of geofencing feature here where the alarm can be enabled or disabled based on your phone's location instead of having to remember to go into the app and tap the button to enable it or disable it each time, but that isn't an option, at least not yet. Also on the homepage, you have the automations button, where obviously, as the name suggests, you can configure automations that you want to run. And again, this process is really simple, well laid out and really easy to use, since it uses if this then that terminology, which we all understand. And I was pretty surprised that there is a good amount of functionality functionality here. You can have automations run based on the state of devices and not just a simple state like a door open or closed, but also things like if a door is left open for a certain amount of time or if motion is detected and the light level is above a certain threshold and some other a bit more advanced states. And this is a really nice addition. 
You can also have automations run based on a timer or a daily schedule if the alarm is triggered and you can even have it run if other automations are triggered. For the actions, again, you have a good amount of functionality here. Being able to control devices like the light switches or buttons or other automations as well as push notifications and alarms. Overall, I was actually pretty impressed with the automations, especially when compared to some other smart home platforms. Obviously, it would be really easy for me to sit here and criticize given how powerful home assistant automations are, but if we take into consideration who this is actually aimed at, I think they have done a really great job here of giving you enough control to cover the majority of functionality that you actually need, whilst keeping it extremely easy and simple for beginners to understand and actually use. And that is a really hard balance to get. As well as creating automations, you can also create scenes, which basically allow you to create a single button that allows you to turn multiple devices all on at the same time. Another neat feature I like is how easy it is to create alarms that not only notify you and whoever else is added to your Arcara home of any emergency, but these alarms can actually also be acknowledged. So for example, if I were to create an alert in the app that notifies me when the leak sensor detects water, I can then go into the alerts page and actually acknowledge that I have dealt with that situation so that my fiance doesn't then come in and think it's still an ongoing issue. And obviously you could do things like if you accidentally triggered your house alarm, you could go in, acknowledge that alarm, and then your fiance or your partner knows that it's just a false alarm. That is a really nice feature and one that I can actually see being very useful. Something else that's also very useful for helping you to learn is the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creators who want to learn a new skill or even brush up on some existing ones. All of the classes are specifically tailored for learning, meaning there is no ads, and they are always launching new premium classes to their existing library. You can choose from a wide range of categories, and with Skillshare Premium, you get unlimited access so that you can learn at your own pace. I've actually been getting back into 3D printing again recently, and so I've been taking a Skillshare original class called Introduction to 3D Printing, an easy start to your first 3D design, by Lauren Slowick, which is really helping me to level up my 3D printing game, but they also have classes on Arduino, Internet of Things, and networking, as well as so much more. The first 1,000 of you to click the link in the video description will get a free one-month trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now, before we get into the Home Assistant aspect, let's first talk about some of the devices that are perhaps a little bit different to the normal temperature, motion, door, and all of those sorts of sensors and devices that we are already familiar with. Firstly, we have the Cube, which is a pretty quirky, but also fun little device. Basically, it can detect quite a number of different scenarios. It's able to actually register if it was flipped 90 or 180 degrees, shaken, rotated, tapped, or pushed. And these can also all be used inside of automations, so it could make for some quite interesting and fun little scenarios. Then we also have the G2H, which is this cute little indoor camera with 1080p resolution, with 140 degree field of view, two-way audio, infrared night vision, records the SD card, and all of those other good features. But it also has HomeKit support built in directly to the camera, and again, that will become important in just a minute. But it can also act as a hub for your other Zigbee devices, so that they can actually pair directly to the camera. And the reason this is nice is because it can actually help you to extend the range of your Zigbee network, which is very useful. Then we also have several buttons. One is a simple, wireless button that we are all familiar with, but then we have two switches that are designed for being put on your wall, one wired and one wireless. The wireless one is intended to cover your existing wall switches if you wanted to, or you can just stick it up next to it. And these are for if you can't or you don't want to get into changing the wiring of your lights. And the wire one will actually replace your existing light switch. These are actually really nice, really responsive, and I really like the clean design of them. Finally, I wanted to circle back and talk about one nice feature that the Akara M2 Hub has, the 360 degree infrared controller. 
Having that controller built right into the hub is great instead of having to have a separate device like a Broadlink just for infrared. And I actually really like the way it handles IR. The interface is super quick and easy to use. There are tons of built-in device presets that you can choose from. And if your device isn't in the list, then you can quickly and easily train your own codes by pointing your remote at the hub. It works really well and I think it is a really nice addition here. All right, so now that we've taken a look at how the whole Akara ecosystem works as a standalone platform, but what about for the rest of us that use Home Assistant? How does this sort of fit in? Well, there are actually two ways that you could go about integrating all of the Akara stuff into your smart home. Firstly, if you already have a Zigbee hub up and running, then you can connect all of the devices and sensors straight to your existing Zigbee network without the Akara hub. And they should all just connect up and work straight away. The Akara devices are really popular and they tend to get support very quickly as soon as they are released. And all the devices I have here actually work right out of the box. And I actually had a lot of these sensors in my smart home for well over a year now, and they work great. So that would be the first way that you can integrate these with Home Assistant. You can pick up any of the sensors and devices individually without the hub and integrate them right into your existing Zigbee network. But what about if you don't have a Zigbee hub already and you're just getting started with Home Assistant and perhaps you want an easy way to get started with some Zigbee devices? Well, as mentioned, the Akara hub has HomeKit support built in. And whilst this isn't a review or a dive into the Apple side of things, what this does mean for us, for Home Assistant users, is that as soon as you connect the Akara hub to your network, it will show up right inside of Home Assistant as an integration. And in all honesty, it works really well. Everything is super fast and responsive, all of the devices show up with their native functions working, and it's just generally a good time. If you have the G2H camera, that will also show up as a camera that you can add right into Home Assistant. The only devices that don't work using HomeKit is the Cube, and also any infrared devices added to the hub. And that's just because HomeKit doesn't have a device type for those sensors, but other than that, everything else works perfectly. The only problem and sort of limitation with picking up an Akara hub for Home Assistant and using it with HomeKit is that it limits you to only using Akara devices. However, Akara does have a crazy amount of devices. Not all of them are available here in the EU yet, but I'm guessing that they will start to trickle in. And so this might not be an issue for you. And if you are a beginner looking to get started with some Zigbee devices inside of Home Assistant, then this could definitely be a great option for you given how easy it is to use this platform and how well it does work. If you also decided that you wanted to change hubs in the future to one that works with more devices, then you can still keep using all of the Akara devices and sensors with that new hub. So it's not like you're gonna have to chuck them in the bin or they would go to waste. So there we go, that is the Akara smart home platform and devices. And like I mentioned, I've actually been using the majority of these sensors long before Akara reached out. The ones I hadn't actually used before was the new wall switches, uh, which I really like, they are super responsive. The air quality sensor, the camera, and of course the hub. It was actually really nice to take a look at this as a standalone platform. And overall, if you are a beginner looking to get into the smart home world, then the new Akara Hub M2 is a great way to do that. It's fast, it's easy to use, they've got loads of devices, and it works really well. If you're a Home Assistant user like me, then you might not be as interested in the hub, but the rest of the sensors and devices are a great addition and well worth picking up and adding them directly to your Home Assistant. They work great, they're generally well supported, very competitive on price, and now that they are selling over here in the EU and also in the States, they are easier than ever before to get your hands on. But I'm interested, let me know what your guys thoughts about the Akara devices and sensors. I'm pretty confident that a lot of you will already have at least one Akara device or sensor in your smart home. If you do, then let me know down in the comments which Akara devices and sensors you are already using and which ones you like best. It's always good to see what others are actually using in their smart home on a day-to-day -day basis. Other than that, if you want to support the channel, then you could do so by becoming a patron on Patreon and your support allows me to keep on making these videos. Thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. As always, your support 
is very much appreciated. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next one.